LEGO dinosaurs are awesome, so today we're exploring their past, present, and future by building this dino costume guy a LEGO dinosaur world. As of now, this Series 24 minifigure is technically the newest LEGO dinosaur, even if he's just a dude in a costume. Meanwhile, this abomination was one of the oldest LEGO dinosaurs, released in 2001 as a 4-in-1 pack. Between this and this, LEGO's made hundreds of dinos in all sorts of different shapes and sizes, so today I'm creating a world where they can all coexist, starting with a house to keep this guy safe from everything, who the comments named... Not Rex, I'm sorry, but if we take off the rest of his costume, I think the name Diego suits him much better. But I started to lay out a footprint, Done. and then we can build the foundation of the house. The walls are going to be solid stone because it's extremely strong against attacks, and it's the only material Diego has available right now. So I used a bunch of different slopes in light gray, dark gray, and dark tan to sort of sculpt up the sides like this. This chunk of the wall kept randomly breaking off though, so let's just use it as a table instead, complete with some lovely decorations on top and a stone chair. The rest of the walls went much more smoothly, where I created an arch of the doorway we can cover up with some animal skins. Diego turned another skin into a rug here, and another into some snazzy sheets for his stone bed. Where's all these skins coming from, you may be asking? Well, Diego is actually a dinosaur hunter in charge of protecting his tribe from danger and getting all the meat and skins they need to survive. He stores all his primitive weapons in this handy little rack here, and even turned this skin into a dinosaur costume he uses to blend in with the dinos whenever he catches a ride across the river to the wilderness they inhabit, which we won't actually build until later on, so right now the dinosaurs are all just out in the open. These classic dinos from the early 2000s are fascinating to look back on. A lot of them are only one or two colors with no prints, limited moving parts, and these rubbery raptors are just pure nightmare fuel. Diego's just gonna take care of them real quick, okay. But on this particular hunt, something strange happened. An orange man just appeared out of nowhere. This was Garrett, who had escaped the farmer's market in a time machine he found, taking him back to dinosaur times. It's a good thing he's dressed as a plant right now, because T-Rexes are carnivores and don't eat food. Diego barely rescued Garrett from becoming lunch and introduced him to the rest of his tribe. These Neanderthals were the original inhabitants of the land that would one day become the city of 24ville, which Garrett really needs to get back to. So he thanked Diego and headed back to the time machine and... Well, apparently that pterodactyl has been giving the caveman trouble for weeks. They call it Terry the Terror. The, the P is silent, by the way. It carried the time machine over to its nest, high up on the cliffside. I had a lot of fun building all this rocky terrain with a nest on top and a big old, big old egg that fits right in there. But with no way to reach it, it looks like Garrett is stuck in the past for now. So the tribe welcomed him in as one of their own. Diego even offered to let him stay at his house once we finished building it. I added a roof covered in mossy leaves and a chimney that you can sort of remove. And all these random clips around the outside are to attach bones that we can use as decorations. Sort of. That's all they had back then. The front side even has these cool horns sticking out, and a T-Rex skull on top, sort of like how some people mount moose heads on the wall. And as a bonus, it can act as a sort of handle to remove the roof easier. But the bones keep getting nibbled off by Diego's pet Ankylosaurus named Spike. He and Garrett are gonna have to share the rug, which did not end well, because Spike loves to steal and bury things in the yard, like Garrett's pants. He's just gonna hide himself while I make another house for the Karoot family. Gugut, Charlie, and their son Jerut, who has a beard. Puberty hit earlier back then. They've been trying to farm their own food that doesn't doesn't want to kill them, like poultry and vegetables. That's why their house is sort of barn shaped with this really cool stone roof technique I used. The front door can obviously open, and the side wall actually opens up too, so you can better see inside. I spent so long struggling to get this thing to work, but the satisfying result was well worth it. The wall on the other side does not open because they don't want the livestock getting inside. Charlie is raising these mini velociraptors, sort of like prehistoric chickens, so I made this cool fence out of bones where they can chill and lay eggs and stuff. No, Spike, don't bury that. Okay, whatever. This silo on the back of the barn is where they would put their crops. If they had any. But so far, they haven't found success in farming anything in their garden. Luckily, though, Garrett was able to help the family plant and grow some prehistoric carrots. Gugut started selling them to the rest of the tribe, and thus capitalism was invented. But Diego felt like he was being replaced. It was his job to provide food for the tribe, not them. So he asked Mumbo Jumbo, the tribe's shaman, to put a curse on their barn that the family may never sell another carrot again. He's based on Mumbo Jumbo from Banjo Kazooie, by the way, and I wanted to build his skull shaped hut from the game. Luckily, I have this piece from an old SpongeBob set. It's literally one singular brick that made it super easy to build. We'll stick some feathers and a chimney on top, and even though we don't have room inside to be game accurate, I did print out the skull sign design he has, and I've hidden five stone skulls in the background throughout this video. If someone can find all five, Mumbo will release a music video on our second channel, so good luck with that. But, anyways, in exchange for making that curse, Mumbo wants Diego to capture him a diamond 
dinosaur to sacrifice in the soon-to-be-built volcano. I grabbed every last brown brick I could find, created a skeleton, and stacked hundreds and hundreds of pieces in that classic conical shape. For the lava, we'll take a little bit of this, a little bit of that. No, I wish. That would be really cool to try someday. But for now, we're just using transparent orange and red pieces to create the bubbling streams of magma instead. This thing looks absolutely fantastic up here. But Momo Jumbo thinks the volcano is going to erupt soon and destroy everything. So he wants to feed it a dinosaur to appease it. Or someone dressed as a dino if he fails to capture one. So Diego better get going. Now that all the plants and greenery are finally in place, new varieties of dinosaurs started appearing. And seeing them all in here like this is actually kind Kind of majestic. Dude, dinosaurs are so cool. I showed off classic Lego dinos earlier, but these modern ones from the 2012 Dino Theme and Jurassic World Trilogy sets are so much more detailed than what their classic counterparts had to offer, and come in a lot more species, which I'm gonna try to name all in one breath, so here it goes. We've got Triceratops, Velociraptor, Pyroraptor, Pterodactyl, Coelophysis, Dilophosaurus, Tyrannosaurus, Carnotaurus, Ankylosaurus, Pachycephalosaurus, and Quetzalcoatlus. <sighs> That's a lot of syllables. <laughs> but this time, Diego wasn't able to catch any of them. If he was going to avoid taking a lava bath, he needed some live bait. Well, that didn't work. Garrett even grew a beard from all that anxiety. He needs to find a way back to 24ville soon. And it looks like Unga and Bunga might be able to help. They like to invent stuff in their stone factory called Uga. You know, I don't think this design will ever catch on. I mean, smokestacks on top, a removable wall to see inside, a conveyor belt that Bunga used to assemble something called Stony on. This will never be popular in the future. But hopefully they can help Garrett get back to the future by inventing something new, like the wheel. No. Or fire. No. But we can add a fire pit in the center of the village where Chief Grok and Gruda sit on their stone thrones with their son Grug and just kind of grunt at people or something. I don't know. But what if we invent the subscribe button? Please click it if you're enjoying the video. Or a time machine. I don't think that'll work. Or sliced bread. No, that just makes me sad. No, 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 no. A staircase? That could probably help them get up the cliff. So after plopping the factory into place, they set a few up and actually made it to the top. Then I added some last minute plants around the village, a waterfall, a tiny little hut for Grug here, and the caveman threw Garrett a surprise party before he left. Except it was all a trap set by Mumbo Jumbo and Diego to capture him. The two of them carried Garrett up the stairs to sacrifice him in the volcano, forgetting all about Terry. It snatched up Diego and flew away. Mumbo tried to save him, but zapped the time machine instead. That cannot be good. We've seen the past and the present of Lego dinosaurs, but this thing started creating some very cursed dinos designed by scientists from the future. Like a Spidosaurus. So it should have eight legs and like, it should have a lot of eyes. A Ninjasaurus. So it's like a ninja, but a, a dinosaur as well. A Chefosaurus. Taking a dinosaur and the Swedish chef from the Muppet. Hort, hort, hort. The Rizosaurus Rex. It's gotta have good riz. Oh, that one is terrible. Terrifying, but it's not as scary as the final boss. I challenge you to build Barney the Dinosaur in Lego, one of my favorite childhood characters. So if you mess this up, I'm unsubscribing. These absolute monstrosities started terrorizing the village, attacking their homes, eating their livestock, stealing their women, and in all the chaos, Mumbo used the opportunity to slip away and continue his plan to throw Garrett into the volcano. It looked like it was all over, until Diego swooped in to save the day. He picked up Mumbo and Garrett, and the three of them harnessed the ultimate power of the dinosaurs to save the village. The abominations were defeated, everyone yeeted them off into the volcano to stop the eruption. And after cleaning everything up, Diego was redeemed as the hero of the village. I really hope you guys enjoyed this massive project. Leave your Terry comments below, and let's get Garrett back to the future. Or not.